Well, cheers everyone. We're gonna talk about security in Windows 10 and I'm just gonna go through the basics because there are just a few things that you can do in Windows 10 that greatly increase your security. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is an advertisement. Um, we're gonna activate Windows. I'm also going to be purchasing these items myself. So I'll walk you through the entire thing because I need another copy of this. And I also need a copy of Office. Right now, over here on Hookies, you can get Windows 10 Pro, and this is the OEM CD key. The thing I like about getting the OEM CD key is you're gonna pay a fraction of the price compared to buying it new in the box. This is the price that most of like the OEM builders and stuff get. It's way cheaper, and I feel like everyone should have access to the same price. I've got a coupon code for 25% off because we've got this nice March sale going on right here. One thing I wanna note, the Windows 10 Pro keys are gonna, they're gonna come down to like 16 bucks after we do the coupon. But this serial number will also work if you wanna activate Windows 11. It's been working for a while. Um, if this video is like five years in the future, it may not work, but right now at the time of making this video, it will activate Windows 11. So all that'll work. And note, these security features will work on Windows 10 and 11. So uh, yeah, I need the new Office right now. You can get Office 2021 if you want, but I actually like Office 2019, so I'm gonna grab a copy of that. So I'm gonna also add that one to my cart. Once you get to this page, we have a coupon code, so I'm gonna use TS25. Hit apply and watch these numbers. Look at that magic, 1614. And then Office for 4459. After you finish making the purchase, just refresh a couple times. There we go, completed. See how quick that was? Page, I'm just gonna click on View Keys and Codes. And when you scroll down, completed, just click on Get the Key right here. And then we will see our um, serial key right here. Just copy that serial key, press Start, type Activate, and you'll see uh, Activation Settings. Click on that. You're Start menu is going to look, look a little different than mine. Click on change product key, paste it here, click on next, and you're done. Windows is activated. Now you can get all of the updates, not just the uh, main security updates, which are important, but you can also uh, have full functionality with your system. Now when it comes to activating Microsoft Office, the link in the description is going to take you to where you need to go to enter your product key. Click on download now on the bottom and you can save a file and start setting up Office, but that's all you have to do. It's now locked to your account. And this is going to be great because instead of just using Microsoft 365, you can have an offline version of Office 2019, which I do like better than 2021, but you know, it's up to you. First thing I'm gonna recommend is something that not a lot of people recommend, because this is sort of a scatter gun. This takes care of a lot of things. If you just click on the apply everything button, it can make Windows a little weird. So we're gonna walk through this and this will just lock down a lot of the telemetry and stuff like that. So it's a good first step. Here's all the things that it can do. Uh, one thing I like to do, just click on actions up here. Do not click apply all settings. That will mess stuff up. Click on apply only recommended settings. That'll get you most of the way there. And that's why I started with this program. Before we do anything, we want a system restore point. So click yes here and just wait. It's making a system restore point that you can restore yourself if anything goes wrong. So now we don't have to worry about this. Now, even though we just clicked the ones that are that are green, like the ones over here that are red, I would not do those. You know, it'll, it'll mess up the functionality of Windows beyond the point of frustration and it could just break things. And you'll also need to run this again. Every time you get a Windows update, just open this program back up, just open up the exe file and just apply only the recommended settings. That's what I do. I've been using this for like five years and it has always worked and I've never had any trouble. The only time I've heard of anyone having any trouble is when they clicked, you know, when they clicked on apply everything. And then all of a sudden they're like, nothing works anymore. And it's like, well, you, you just took a shotgun when you really just needed a hammer to fix it. And you, you drove a nail into a wall with a shotgun. So the next thing we need to do is get into our user info section and make a few changes, make sure our passwords are good to go and make sure that our computer is gonna lock when we're not right in front of it. Again, this is especially useful if you are on a uh, laptop or if you're traveling. So click on the start button and right over here, there's a tiny little picture. When you hover over it, it'll pop out. Just click on your name, your username, and click on change account settings. Now we can go through and make sure everything is good. Now, right here, if you are on a Microsoft account and you are signed in, it will tell you that you're using an online account. You need to make sure that once you're here, you click on your info and tell it to use a local account. Now, why would you wanna use a local account instead of the Microsoft account? Well, the Microsoft account is, is it's decently secure. You know, it's not terrible. But the thing is, if, if that account is compromised, multiple machines that you, that you have 
could all be compromised because they're all using the same login and they're all sharing information. So yes, it's an ease of life thing, but just make sure your password's really good if you're using an online Microsoft account. Otherwise, I recommend using local accounts on each machine. That's how I do it. Um, you'll sacrifice a few ease of life features, but it's worth it if you want ultimate security. You really have to do it that way. Now, click on sign in options. Make sure your password is up to date and you have a good password. Um, if you're using a pen or whatever, I usually like to turn off the face stuff. This has been fooled by uh, just holding up pictures of your face. It's uh, hit or miss. If you want to use Win Windows uh, fingerprint, you can do that all here as well. Now, this is some important stuff. You want to require the computer to make you sign in when it wakes from sleep. That way, someone else can't open up your computer and immediately get into, you know, just have access to it because it, it woke from sleep, but there's no need for passwords. So make sure, do not, if it says never, no. Put it on when PC wakes from sleep. And then, this is pretty cool. If you want to, if you have a laptop especially, and you have like a, a Bluetooth device like this, you can pair your computer with the Bluetooth device. And then when you walk away from your computer, and if you like leave your computer there, it will lock just because this is no longer in the vicinity. So that's kind of handy, but the downside is if someone gets a bag that has this and your other stuff in it, eh, you know. So I leave that off and I've gotten into a habit. Whenever I get up from my computer, I press the Windows key and L. And I've been doing that since like the Windows XP days because, well, actually probably before that, I don't remember if, when, I don't remember how far back this goes, but we used to go to LAN parties you learned really fast that if you walk away for two seconds, you better press Windows key L. If you're going in the other room to get another soda or something, when you come back, your desktop wallpaper is going to be changed to something horrendous. And you, you won't even know about it because they're going to they're going to maximize the windows. So you won't see it until like, you know, you're chilling, you're chilling, and then you close the game or you minimize and you like, ah! you need eye bleach after that. So I learned because I didn't want to use any more eye bleach. I learned to press Windows key L and it's become a habit. If you get up, even when you're home, if you get up from your computer, press Windows key L. Nothing stops. It doesn't sleep your computer. It just locks it. So get into that habit and you will be a much happier and better person. Also, while we're talking about sign in options, I want to get a little bit more advanced and do something a little fun. So press the start button again and type net PLWIZ. Press enter. And there we have our user accounts and stuff like that. If you click on advanced, you can manage your passwords. Just make sure that, you know, all the settings here uh, say that you, every time you start your computer, make sure that you are forcing it to use a password. You do not want automatic login. It makes your life easy. It's not worth it. Don't use automatic login. And also while we're here, put a check mark on, see that? Require users to press Control Alt Delete before they can log in and apply. Now what that does, is, is if uh, anyone sits down to your computer, they can't just type in your password and press enter. They have, they have to press control alt delete first. This is a very basic security measure so that what this does is it ensures that there's not a fake like login screen because sometimes malware or a virus can make your computer look like it's locked. It'll do a full screen application and it'll be like, please enter your password and you'll do the password and stuff like that. But if you're, if you're in Windows and and there's just like a full screen application taking over. If you're forced to press Control Alt Delete first, then it'll you know obviously bring up the the task manager and stuff like that, or, or you know it'll let me see if it even works. Uh, does it work? Yeah, it, it'll see how it made my screen go black. It was bringing up the task manager and stuff, so it'll bring you here and be like, what's going on? Huh? You'll also know if there's a full screen application and it doesn't ask you to press Control Alt Delete, you'll know this is fishy. So I really think that you should uh, always press Control alt delete Again, this is especially true if you have a laptop. So go, go ahead and do that. So this one I'm gonna touch on and then we'll move on, but because um, I only wanna do a couple more basic things, I'll do a more advanced video. But this is another thing that's uh, been exploited a few times. And I'm just gonna link you to this article which shows you how to disable remote access in Windows 10. This is not gonna be for everybody because sometimes you need to have remote access to your machines and stuff like that. And as long as you lock them down properly doing a number of other things, you're pretty good to go, but I do recommend doing this if you're not using remote access, there's no reason to turn it on. And I'll leave that there in the description. I 
put this question online and we, we let the, the users answer and a lot of people were saying use a VPN. Now a VPN may give you a false sense of security. So a VPN is not going to protect you any more than just using the regular internet. It's just allowing you to connect from somewhere else. Where it will protect you is it'll protect you from like Comcast, spying eyes, everything you do is going to be encrypted. So people are not gonna be able to see what you're doing on the internet. But if you're still connecting to a malicious website and downloading a virus or something like that, you can still download it. It'll just be encrypted. Comcast won't know that you're downloading a virus. Your ISP won't know that you're downloading a virus and whoever may have spying and prying eyes, they won't know what you're downloading, but you can still download bad things with a VPN. There's a couple things I do with my VPN that actually block all of that stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I use private internet access uh, myself. I'll put a link to uh, this in the description because we have a deal, as you can see here, that'll let you, where's the, geez, I'll just scroll all the way down, let you get it for as low as $2.03 a month. Now, um, it's very similar as far as like the speed to uh, Mulvod, and a lot of people recommend this VPN. I use private internet access because my tests were a little bit better when I did the speed test myself. Uh, and also, private internet access has never had a breach. Ne no one's ever gotten in trouble. Nothing. It, it's more of a precedent thing. Like, a lot of these have different settings and say different things, but I look at all the ones out there. I think you know, Movault hasn't had any problems either. So these are like my top two choices. Um, and I'll show you the reason that I've been using this one. I don't know if Movault's new client does this, but, but check this out. Let me open up private internet access and we'll show you. But if we click on the little dot, dot, dot here and go to settings, we can also get dedicated IP, which is awesome. When we go to our network here, if we are connecting through private internet access, we can use our existing DNS, which will expose our connection to whom, whomever. You know, Comcast will see every website that you're logging into. They won't know what you're doing there, but you're gonna be hitting their DNS server if you're using them. If we use the private internet access DNS server, well, we're gonna be routing our web traffic and our DNS. Now, what is DNS? DNS is every time you type uh, a website, you type text syndicate into your browser, well, it has to go to a DNS lookup. It'll be like, hey, Comcast, what was the IP address for Tech Syndicate? And Comcast DNS server will say, oh, it's this. It'll tell them. So DNS, um, if, you have, if you're using a, an evil DNS, if someone goes in and like changes your DNS settings so that every time you're asking, hey, what's Google? It sends you to an evil, suspicious Google instead. That can be bad. But that's not likely, but it, you know, it can happen. With private internet access, their DNS blocks tons of sites that have malware, ads, spam, and just garbage. So I like to use their DNS while I'm using private internet access because it actually does give us a layer of security above just using the regular internet. You can achieve very similar fun functionality if you run a Raspberry Pi and install a bit of software called Pihole. If you want a video on Pi-hole, there's probably some out there, but I can do one for if you like, but that's a bit more advanced than this. This one is just, you download the app, install it, go to network, set it on PIA DNS, turn it on, and you're good to go. So other than that, if you want a dedicated IP, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's very reasonable. So there's a lot of different things you could do here. This is one of my favorite things as well, split tunneling. Um, it allows certain applications to use private internet access and other applications to use the regular internet. So if you want full speed internet on a few applications like for gaming and stuff, but you wanna make sure your torrenting application uses VPN, you can use that. So there's a lot of cool features inside here, but the main thing, but the, but the main thing really for security is using a better DNS server. So that's why I recommend private internet access. Again, our link is in the description that will give you some money off. We've had a coupon with them for a few years. Before we go on, I want to remind everybody that Hookies had sponsored this video. They also have physical goods now. Check that out, all these little keyboards and stuff. So while you're grabbing your copy of Windows and Office, you can also browse around and see what else they have. Thanks to Hookies, now back to the video. Now let's talk about encryption. What if someone were to grab your laptop and they can't get in because you have everything all password protected? Well, you know what they can do? They can pull out the hard drive, put it into a new computer, open it up, and then start browsing through your files. Maybe they'll find your financial documents and stuff. There's a way we can stop them, and that is with BitLocker. This is an encryption scheme built into Windows 10, 11, uh, 20, uh, Server 2016, and, and, and above. So you can use this on a lot of different stuff. Now, does this impact your performance if you turn on drive-wide encryption? Not really, especially if you're using one of the new 
uh, one of the newer computers. A lot of the new CPUs have this stuff built in. So it uses the trusted platform module to log in in the first place. So it's gonna be locked to your motherboard. Meaning if you take this out and put it into another computer, you better have your backup, your backup password. So if you're gonna enable BitLocker, make sure you keep all, you know, keep track of all of your passwords and stuff like that, your BitLocker passwords. Put it somewhere safe and secure. Now what'll happen if someone were to get your drive, if it's been encrypted with BitLocker, it's, that's it. They, they, unless they can break that encryption key, which I have not heard of anyone doing, that drive is basically useless to them. So even if they steal your hard drive out of your computer, steal your laptop, take out the hard drive, put it in theirs, it's over. So um, also a lot of the a lot of the, the newer SSDs and stuff will advertise that they do hardware encryption on the SSD. Some of them lie. So you want to make sure that you have a good brand name, especially if you're dealing with security. Make sure you get a reputable brand name and not a brand you've never heard of from some weird warehouse you know, like some off-brand like uh, Happy King or something. That's like, that's not a Kingston, that's a Happy King. Or a, or a Sam Bong or something instead. That's not a Samsung, that's a Sam Bong. What is that? Like, I'm just making these names up, but you get the idea. And uh, I'll show you how we can turn on encryption. It's very easy. Just right-click on this and click Turn on BitLocker. There you go. And it's going to tell you, Trusted Platform Module, your administrator must set Allow BitLocker. Okay, so... We need to enable the trusted platform module. Most modern motherboards have this available. You need to uh, restart your computer. Just keep pressing the delete key when you do. Go into your BIOS or your UEFI and then look for the TPM and turn that on. Then you can do it easily. Um, if you don't have trusted platform module, you can still do this, but you will need to provide a USB key that will work as like the encryption decryptor. So you'll have to plug that in physically. You'll have to have an extra USB port and don't lose that USB key, you'll be in trouble. So I recommend going into the uh, UEFI, the BIOS and turning on trusted platform module. I'll do it after I finish this video. I'm doing all this myself. That's one of the reasons I made this video so I could lock down stuff. Now you can do this on every drive. I would recommend doing it on the drives that have sensitive information. D is all games for me, so I'm not really worried if somebody gets my save files. They're gonna have a super sweet character in, in Morrowind, but they're not gonna have my bank statements, so that's fine. But anyway, that's how you do it. If you wanna take one further step, I would recommend getting a password manager. There's a few different password managers out there. Uh, the ones that I found the easiest to use are Bitwarden, and NordPass. Now these both have very similar features. Bitwarden has a couple extra features that NordPass does not have, but NordPass has a little bit friendlier of a user interface. And it also has the best encryption on the market. So both of them uh, do really well. And it is a really good idea to use a password manager. So if you want a special video just on that, let me know, we can talk about it. Password managers will go through and search all of your different passwords and let you know which ones have been compromised so that you can change them for each individual website. And then they will also generate unique passwords for each website. Just make sure that you keep your master password for your password manager in a very safe place. Bitwarden is also my favorite when it comes to free, but the paid version of NordPass is pretty good, so. Doom Slayer here. We got a Doom Slayer talking about Kapersky internet security. And yes, you know something? It seems like every antivirus has a bad name these days. I mean, with McAfee and Norton, it's it's like everyone just kind of associates antivirus with bloatware or garbage, or a lot of people are like, the antivirus is worse than the virus. So it's like, okay, but Kapersky's a little bit different. It's very reputable. And if you just look online, People are having good experiences with it. So if you want just the free version, then Kapersky is a pretty good way to go. It'll provide a malware detection and stuff like that too on top of all this. So just the free version will give you active live protection. Now I have paid for this version. This is the what I use. I use this in conjunction with Windows Security. So Windows Security is pretty good, but it, it needs something to bridge the gap over into malware and everything else. Malwarebytes detects a lot of Trojans and stuff too, but you have to pay if you want active scanning. If you just download this program, it's not gonna actively scan things. So 
this is a, this is the premium option that I like. It's what I use. I pay for it. But if you're not going to pay for it, start with this one. You may end up wanting to pay for it as well because security is more important than 30 bucks or something like that, you know? These are my two picks when it comes to antivirus, anti-malware. Uh, you can use malware bytes with other antivirus software, but the Kapersky suite kind of does mostly everything and it's this is it's the one. It's the best one right now in my opinion. So, use that. So Wesley has some really good options here that I do not think we should pass up on when it comes to, you know, security because we use our computers mostly to connect to the internet and do stuff. So let's get some extensions and stuff for Firefox. We can get, you can get them for Chrome or whatever else. Uh, Ghostery, you can get that for all kinds of different things. Now this one mostly just makes you a ghost to all that junk that's tracking you all over the internet. So while it's not exactly a security program, it will help you to protect your identity on the internet and just help with some of those annoying cookies and stuff that follow you everywhere. This one will protect you from malicious code that's injected into websites. It's called NoScript. So install NoScript. I have it installed on my other computer. Why is it not on this one? There we go. I'm allowing it to run in private windows. It gives it a lot of privilege, but you know, gotta have it in private windows if you know what I mean. So let me show you what this one will do. Tech Syndicate. Any scripts running on this page? Should have a couple, but it'll basically block most of the scripts from running. This page is safe. So for me, I know because I need to mess with it. You can set it to trusted by clicking up here and then going to trusted. Now, the other program that I use is Privacy Badger, but that's very similar to Ghostery. So you can pick and choose the one you like. Next up, HTTPS everywhere. So HTTPS everywhere is a plugin. You can get it for whatever browser you want. It just forces every website to make sure that it's running the encrypted HTTPS protocol. All right, a few recommendations from the community. Simple Wall. Thanks very much for recommending Simple Wall. The Windows Firewall, it gets the job done, but it's it's it lets so much junk through. SimpleWall is a program that blocks everything, literally everything. In my opinion, it's almost too much, but if you're super worried about any connections to the outside world, if you have a little computer that's just there for, for managing accounts and wallets and stuff like that, and you wanna make sure that nothing else is allowed to connect to that device or connect to the internet, this allows you to granularly give access to individual programs and it will tell you every single time any program asks for access to the internet. He was saying that one time SimpleWall detected that the, the Microsoft calculator was trying to access the internet. Again, SimpleWall every time pops up on the screen is like, hey, do you wanna let this program access the internet? So it's, it's over the top for some, but if you want extreme security, it's good. And there's a video here, I'll link to it. Hey, how you doing? I don't know much about Chris Titus, so maybe he's cool, maybe he eats babies, but I don't know. So. I'm not endorsing the channel, but I am endorsing this video because I watched it and it was pretty good. So there. Okay, so those are my ideas for just the basics of how to get Windows 10 and 11 locked down. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want to see more advanced uh, tips, let me know. Maybe we'll do a more advanced video. Do you have any ideas? Uh, are there any just rock dumb simple things that you're sad that I left out of this video? Let me know in the comments. All right, one last thanks to our sponsor, Hookies, who made this video possible. Get Windows, get it secured, and check out some of the other stuff they have over at hookies.com. Links are all in the top of the description.